in the mid-1600s, a very curious and brilliant Danish Renaissance man named Niels Stenson made his way to Florence, Italy, where he became known by his Latinized name, Nicholas Steno. Steno was interested in studying medicine. He was particularly interested in muscles. He was fascinated by how muscles contract, changing shape, but not their volume. As part of his study of muscles, Steno was dissecting a shark's jaws to examine the muscles that allowed the mouth to open and close. He noticed that the shark's teeth looked an awful lot like mysterious tongue stones. So people had been noticing these tongue stones for a very long time. Today we know they're fossilized shark teeth, but in Steno's time, nobody really understood what they were looking at. Needless to say, a few strange ideas about where tongue stones came from made their way around, and this was before there was even an internet. For example, early Roman scientist Pliny the Elder thought that tongue stones probably fell to earth from the sky or maybe the moon. Steno had a clever idea. Maybe the tongue stones looked like shark's teeth because, well, maybe they were shark's teeth. I know, right? Then Steno got to thinking about other things that were, could be found underneath of the ground. The Latin term fossus means that which has been dug up. And that's where we get the word fossil today. In Steno's time, anything you dug up, including rocks, was called a fossil. Today, we still use the word fossil with its 17th century meaning when we talk about fossil fuels. Originally, fossil fuels were simply those that were dug up from Earth. They had nothing to do with dinosaurs. Sorry, dinosaur, it's not always about you. So anyway, about Niccolo Steno. His interest was in anything that could be dug up, including rocks and minerals and veins and even entire rock layers that we call strata. In 1669, Steno published a paper that discussed the behavior of rocks in layers or strata. First of all, Steno composed the law of original horizontality. This simply says that rock layers form horizontally. Specifically, he was talking about sedimentary layers. When sediment is suspended in water, it gradually falls downward, making horizontal layers of sediment. You can see this when you make chocolate milk. Mix the chocolate with the milk in a clear glass. Some of the chocolate will settle down to the bottom in a horizontal layer, just like the suspended silt or clay in a cloudy river settles to the bottom, only way tastier. So what did Steno's laws tell us about rock layers or strata that are not horizontal? Well, they must have been acted upon by some force that is tilted or bent or compressed them. I know, it seems like common sense today, but in Steno's time, this was a big deal. So what else did Steno have to say? Well, there's the law of superposition. This simply says that if you find layers of rock strata, the oldest layers are at the bottom and the younger layers are at the top. Specifically, in a sequence of rock strata, older layers lie beneath younger layers. It's kind of like a yogurt parfait. If you put the blueberries and then a little vanilla yogurt and then some strawberries and a little pink strawberry yogurt and some peaches and a little bit more purple yogurt and some granola into a parfait, you can see which of the layers has been there the longest. It's the blueberries. And which of the layers has been there the least amount of time? It's the granola. So you know that the blueberry layer is the oldest layer and the granola layer is the youngest layer. This applies to rock layers too, like those found in Zion National Park. Here at the bottom, you find the oldest layer, and at the top, you find the youngest layer. Steno's law of cross-cutting states that if a layer is cut by a fault or magma pushing into it, the rock that is cut must be older than the rock that cuts it. So when you see a place where molten lava has pushed into another rock, you know the solidified lava is younger than the rock that it resides in. Like here, the rock was here first, and then this lava intruded. That's why it's called an intrusion or intrusive lava. Here, 
The dark rock was here first. The lighter rock intruded later. In this area, you can see that the layered rock was here first, and then this fault line cut into the layered rock. The fault line is younger than the layers of rock. Here's another example. Layers of rock first, and then a fault line. The last of Steno's laws, the law of lateral continuity, states that rock layers extend in all directions horizontally unless something stops them or erodes them. An obvious example of this law can be found in the Grand Canyon in Arizona and the United States. You can see the layers of rock found on both sides of the Colorado River. That's the Colorado River right there. The layers were here first, and then the Colorado River eroded the layers away, making them really easy to see. Here's another view of the same place. There's the Colorado River, which cut through some of these layers, and you can see the layers extend on both sides of the river. Coming up with these four rules has earned Nicholas Steno the title, the father of stratigraphy. Stratigraphy is the study of strata, or rock layers. Not only that, but there's a whole museum dedicated to Nicholas Steno's scientific endeavors in Denmark. So Steno may have gotten the cool title and museum, but probably one of the coolest geology-related nicknames of all time has got to go to William Strata Smith, a British surveyor's assistant and a generally observant guy. And Smith found the same recognizable layers of rock could be found in many places throughout England. In 1815, Strata Smith became something of a cartographic superstar when he created the first large-scale geologic map of Great Britain, showing all those super interesting rock layers. It's a geologic map based on my knowledge of strata, and that's why the ladies call me strata. Understanding how rock layers or strata behave helps us understand the stories rocks have to tell us. As always, it's pretty amazing, huh?